Hello, everybody, and welcome into my latest live broadcast. Today, it is Tuesday, the 20th of June, 2023. My name is Kerry Holzman, and today I've got a review for you. Uh, is it too exciting for a Tuesday? Well, this whole week's going to be exciting. i got all kinds of crazy stuff coming up and next week, too. So uh, I don't know how we've made it already past the middle of June, but here we are. Mini Swarm sent me the UM790 Pro. It's their new Venus series line of uh, gaming mini PCs, really. And these things at this level are pretty darn powerful. Let me go through the, uh, the Mini Swarm page, their website, and we'll look at the specs together. I have not taken us out of the box or done anything. So during today's video, all the unboxing is happening for the very first time. I have no rehearsal, no script. There's no way for me to edit anything. This is all done live in one take. So we'll see what we get. You'll get my genuine reaction to it. But I've got high, high hopes that this is going to be a machine you're going to covet. You're going to want this one. Because when I'm looking at the specifications here at the site... Oh, and by the way, uh, the folks over at Minis Forum are having a special... And they're running machines at a very high discount right now, celebrating their third year anniversary at, uh, for their store, the Minis Forum store. And every day at, I guess it's at 10 a.m., but I'm not sure what time zone. We'll take a look at that in a minute. They're running very limited, extreme discounts on product. So you got to get in early and you can get a really great deal. But let's take a look at what we've got here. The UM790 Pro. Now, I personally looked at YouTube, couldn't really find much on this unit because it doesn't start shipping until next month. So we're getting a first look, and thanks again to the folks at Miniswarm for giving us this opportunity to offer you content you cannot find anywhere else. Now, you can see a bare-bones system is $519. That's discounted from the $639. So you know it's got to be a powerful machine if we're over the $500 mark. But how do we define that? Well, on the outside, it looks like any other uh, mini PC. But inside, it's got an AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS. Its built-in graphics is the Radeon RDNA 3 780M, which is what we saw in the GTR 7 that I had troubles with. We'll see if we have troubles with it today. Uh, dual PCIe Gen 4 solid state drives. It supports RAID 0 and RAID 1 configurations. You can double the capacity, double the speed, double the data security. Uh, hmm, that gives me ideas. Their Cold Wave 2.0 cooling technology is an innovative cooling structure for stronger performance and lower noise. They've got the killer brand wireless network card included with a graphical BIOS. That's different. Usually they're the kind of old school text based BIOSes and dual 40 gig USB 4 um, Type-C USB ports that have power delivery. So they, they can deliver power out of those ports. And this thing is less than one liter in size. It's 0.8 liter. It frees up 40 times more space compared to a regular desktop computer on your desk. It does come with a, uh, a Visa mount so you can set it to on your desk, or you can mount it behind your monitor when no one can see it, just like that. And let's see, it's got a metal body. Oh, that's always nice to see versus the plastic. A little bit more about their Cold Wave 2.0, how they're going to keep this thing cool, because the Ryzen 9 is pretty much right at the tippy top of performance, and that means it's going to create a lot of heat. So there's a little discussion here on the website about that. And it has an additional cooler. Uh, on top of the unit, so one on each side, one for the CPU and one for keeping the memory and drives cool. And yes, you can hook monitors up to those, those uh, USB or Type-C ports. Compared to a traditional BIOS, the graphical BIOS offers a more user-friendly configuration. I think this may be one of the first, if not the first, mini PC we've seen with a graphical BIOS. I'm interested in that. The Wi-Fi is an AX1675. It is wireless uh, Wi-Fi 6E. It's 
wireless. Let me rephrase. It's Wi-Fi 6E 2x2. Maximum speed up to 2.4 gigabits per second. Yeah, you heard that right. 2.4 gigabits per second. A wired connection on a gigabit network is 1 gigabit per second. This is 1.4 times that. Actually, yeah. 2.4 times that, isn't it? All right. 150%, 140% faster. Bluetooth 5.3, that's the latest version, and that's what we want to see. Oh, wow. Look at these transfer speeds. How are they getting to be this high? Hmm? Oh, dual NVMe RAID 0 showing speeds of 13,000 megabytes a second. Hmm, I might have to try something about that. And then the 40 gig USB 4. Oh, I might have to break out my uh, my other SanDisk Extreme USB drive and test that theory and see if that if we can get 2,000 out of it. Dual channel RAM supports up to 5,600 megahertz. That's DDR5, in case you were wondering. There are some benchmark scores for you. It supports AV1 and H.265 video encoding. So this would be a great little box for a content creator like me. I'll have to give it a shot when we're done with the show. And maybe, uh, maybe I'll produce the show in 4K on this little box and see how long it takes. Low power consumption, 60 watts compared to a 12490 Intel chip with a GTX 1650, which is an equivalent with regards to performance, which is at 150 watts. This is doing that equivalent at a fraction of the power consumption. In the box, we're supposed to have the unit, power adapter, power cord, an HDMI cable, some screws, and the Visa mount, which is what the screws are for, and then, of course, a user manual. As I mentioned, Mini's Forum is having their three-year anniversary store sale. Store, not the company. The store has been around three years. And they got some great deals going on. But you have to catch them early in the morning. And they're going on from now until the end of the month. There is some crazy good deals. Crazy good deals. But you got to get here early. So if we look at... Uh, like this, I think, is an i5 machine here. What does it say? Sold out. Flash sale that started on 620 has ended, but get ready because another round of exciting deals will begin tomorrow at 10 a.m. Okay, is that my time? I'm not sure. <laughs> but if you want to save some money and get a quality mini PC, minis forum are one of the best they are a leader in mini PC manufacturing that the others strive to duplicate. So just so you know, that's where their standing is in regards of mini PC manufacturers, in my opinion. When it comes to owning um, a mini PC, my first choice is Miniswarm. Absolutely. I would say the three big manufacturers in this space, when you're looking at the Asian manufacturers versus the... Uh, the manufacturers here in the U.S. like Asus and Intel, there's some big manufacturers. Uh, Minisform leads the way, and I would put uh, B-Link right below them, and then Ace Magician slash Cam Rui when you want sort of a leader in the budget line. Now, Minisform creates everything from the budget line to the mid-range to the high-end to high-end gaming systems, and they have their own unique form factors and designs, unlike anybody else in the market. If I sound like... I'm a salesman. I just, I'm generally enthralled with the product. So when they ask me if I'd like to review literally anything they make, I'm always like, you know, it's like asking a dog if it wants to go for a walk. <laughs> yes, please. So, and this, this is no slouch. As you know, I was a little disappointed with the uh, outcome of the GTR 7. It's still, it's kind of a unique problem that a content creator has in my situation. I'm hoping we don't have the same problem here. And I am also hopeful that there will be an update that resolves my issues with the GTR 7. So if I don't have any issues with this, this is, this is gonna be the one. So you don't have to ask me, <laughs> which one will I like better? I like the one that works out of the box. 
All right. Well, thank you to Mark Gaines, who contributed an Amazon gift card before the show. Appreciate you, Mark. Cheers, my friend. Slancha. Rick Lakes contributes $5 and says hello. Paul O'Brien contributes five euro, says hello, Carrie and Marlena. Looking forward to tonight's stream. Have a drink on me. Well, again, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Rick. Now, originally today, we were going to have a mini PC that is brand new to the market. They were a Kickstarter called Zulu, X-U-L-U. -U. Zulu asked me to wait until Friday, which is launch day, also my birthday. Um, they're asking all the YouTube content creators that they send units to to with restrain from making any content until Friday. So that will be Friday's show. But if you want to Google it and get a little heads up of how different and unique that is, uh, I've never heard of the company before, so I don't have an opinion one way or the other. So I have a lot of confidence when reviewing Minis Forum because of their history and with other Minis Forum PCs that I have. I, I haven't had a bad one, not yet. So let's get this thing opened up and see what we got going on. Hello to everybody joining in the chat. Are we ready for today's show? This ought to be a good one. Let's see what we got. First time. Okay, so in the box, some foam. The slow boot time may be caused by an unexpected reboot, a BIOS reset, RAM replacement, or SSD replacement. In general, boot time will resume normal after one normal reboot. Yeah, yeah we all know that the first boot take a while. Okay, here's, here's how they package it. Yes, what do we pull a tab? Mm, pull this down this way. Slide that out. Oh, that's definitely metal. It's got some weight to it. Holy cow. Let me walk it over to the camera. We'll take a close up look. All right. Here's the front. And as you can see, we've got our reset button that little symbol kind of looks like headphones but it's actually a little arrow looping around and that's a recessed button you'd use like an unfolded paper clip to reset the bios if you were overclocking or something on i wouldn't but you know to each his own next to that is just a standard it looks like a reset button right there also recessed then our power button and then our two usb4 ports and then we have a headset jack which you can use for a microphone headphones or a combo headset. Nothing on this side, nothing on that side. Coming around to the back, well, we've got that all filled up, don't we? We've got our barrel connector, two HDMI outs. We've got our 2.5 gig LAN and four USB, uh, what are those, 3.2s? On the bottom, once again, Mini Swarm is covering up the screws with sticky rubber feet which I'm not a fan of. I wish the screws were exposed because we are going to open this up and look inside of it. I like how it's got a little arrow when you take the back off. It shows you which way to put it back on. This does not have the pull tab. Oh, no, I guess mini swarms don't, don't use that one. Uh, these two screws are for the Visa mount if you're going to use that. And then um, you can see a cooling fan right in there. That's going to be your CPU, I think. No, no. That's going to be your storage and your RAM here. And then there'll be a fan right up at the top here where your CPU is. All right. We're off to the races, folks. This is looking good. Looking good. It's a standard form factor size. And let's see what else we have in the box. Inside of the box, I've got power adapter. Oh, Minis Forum, thank you so much. They're using a standard uh, PC power cord. So I've got tons of those laying around, so I won't need to use the included one. They got an HDMI cable in here. The Visa mount and screws are here. And they've given us two extra rubber feet. Um, shouldn't there be four? Well, I suppose they do this because if you take the rubber foot off to get inside of it, and for some reason you can't stick it back on. You got a couple of fresh ones there. 
all the more reason they should not be covering up the screws with the rubber feet. I think they could drill a little, not drill, you can mold the rubber feet with a hole off to the side where the screw is, and that way you wouldn't have to take the little rubber foot off. It's fine if you're only going to open the machine up once, but if you open it up a couple of times a year, it's going to have a hard time getting those rubber feet to stay on, at least not without using, you know, getting creative with, I don't know, hot melt glue or your own glue. Let's plug this in. We'll get it all hooked up. We'll fire it up for the first time and see how it is out of the box setting it up. So let's, we're going to leave the internet unplugged during first time setup. I'm going to use my standard PC power cord. Again, big <laughs> thank you to Miniswarm for sticking with a standard here that's very common and nobody should have any problems finding one. We'll plug our capture card into either of the HDMI ports. And then I need a keyboard and a mouse, which I have right over here. It's my keyboard and mouse dongle. All the Type-A ports are in the back. There's no Type-A ports up front. It'd be kind of nice if there was one Type-A port up front, but uh, not, a deal. not a deal breaker for me. Okay. Are we ready for this? I'm going to turn it on. It's the power button right there. Oh, okay, so next to this is not, that's not a reset, that's an LED. I think the reset is over here, maybe there's another pinhole. I'm not sure what that is. We'll dive in deeper on that. Let me switch over to the HDMI input so we can get an idea of what's going on right now. Uh-oh, uh-oh, okay. So as you recall, we had a problem with the, uh, dealing GTR7 in that the screen gets squished and cut in half with this specific chipset. And it does appear to be a driver issue. And this is something that I'm sure it has to come from AMD, the fix. Um, yeah, that is not good. We've seen this before and my fix, let me go back over here for a second. This is a tricky thing to talk about because most of you would never have this problem if you're plugging it directly into a monitor. But because I'm going into a capture card, every capture card I've tried, these things using the, the 780M um, Ryzen-based RDNA3 graphics, it's, it's, doing, it's sending a signal out in a funky way. And the way I got around this before was I used a completely different capture card, which I have over here. And this is just a, a USB-based Camlink 4K capture card. And even with this capture card, it'll still sometimes come up funky, but we can at least make it usable. Now, if I'm not plugging it into a capture card, if I'm just plugging it straight into the monitor, um, then the signal's fine. But this is clearly something that has to be addressed from AMD. And I don't know how long it's going to take for anybody to get AMD's attention about this. I'm not sure that anybody's complaining because as far as I know, I'm the only one on the internet exposing this. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Let me plug this in back here. So we'll go right up there. And then I need an HDMI cable, don't I? That's probably going to help. Where do I just steal the HDMI cable we're using now? Which is, hold on a second, I think it's this one. Is it this one? These are live videos, so we'll see if I just connect the wrong cable. That's it. Come on, unplug. Darn it. It's not that one. This one? Okay. Well, I only have four cables to pick from, so clearly it's got to be the fourth one. 
<laughs> ah, I'm such a genius. All right. <laughs> So now I've got it plugged into the Camlink 4K USB cable, uh, USB uh, HDMI capture card. And then I go into OBS and configure the capture card right in here. Camlink 4K. Ooh. Or not Let's see if I can get a signal out of this thing no signal at all let me something here I'm going to turn off that input turn it back on again that did not help I'm going to shut the unit off I'll just hold the power button in. We have to get past this for me to do what I want to do today to evaluate this. And this is not manufacturer specific. This is chipset specific, and it is a brand new chipset. So uh, any manufacturer that uh, that uses this chipset is using AMD's reference drivers anyway. And uh, it does appear to be an AMD driver issue with regards to dealing with that so i'm still still not getting a signal here so bear with me just a moment try and figure out what the heck is going on here Now, another way around this is we can hook up an external monitor and we can film it that way. But my preference is I like the straight through capture card. And I've never had this problem with any other PC ever. And it's just the teething of new technology. You know, you want to be first, you want to get in there early. And these are the kind of problems you can expect to have, unfortunately. Camlink is not not being happy. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, let me grab a small monitor, uh, my portable monitor. And besides, we can try the USB 4 out as well while we're in there. So this monitor will run off of one USB Type-C cable that will provide the video signal and the power to power this monitor, all on one cable. And they sell these in 15-inch models and 17-inch models. There's our HDMI cable right here. And we'll go through the USB 4 port up front here. And again, this does deliver power, which we have to have to power the screen. I guess we want to be on this side, maybe. Never quite sure which side I have to be on for this monitor. I haven't, haven't used it very much. So InnoView is the name of the monitor manufacturer. And it says no signal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull power from the uh, mini PC, plug that bat back in, turn it back on, and we'll see if we get a signal over here. I'm leaving the other screen on just to see if that wakes up at all. So this says no signal. We're not getting any video output at all.
Hmm. So we're definitely getting our power delivery. Interesting. Uh, it may need Windows to load to load the driver. Maybe that's why that's not working. I'm going to put the HDMI cable back where it was here on the original capture card. And we're going to come around over here, change my properties. Hmm. Should be more than just a blank screen. Turn this back off. I have no idea where the power button is. I'm reaching for it like I'm familiar, like I've done it a million times. All right, so we get no signal, right? So that's how we can tell there's signal coming from the unit. It's just putting it out at a frequency that the capture cards, it just blows their minds. They don't know what to do with it. So we'll turn that back on again and see if it has any better luck initializing with it plugged into the other capture card. Nick Poverman says I should just stretch the screen with OBS. We could try that if I can get the screen back again. But right now, I'm just seeing a black screen. So we're not even able to do anything other than that right now. And again, this is a problem with this new AMD chipset. It is not a problem with B-Link or Mini's forum. It's also not a problem any of you would likely experience when you plug it directly into a monitor. But it is a high-end, uh, it's the highest-end integrated graphics chip on the market. So if you wanted a PC for gaming and you wanted it tiny without adding a discrete GPU or an external GPU, you definitely want the 780M. So I am a little bit concerned that we did get a picture before <laughs> and now I've made it worse. <laughs> I laughed because I want to cry. Um, we might be a little rough out of the gate here with this one. Unplug it, plug it back in, turn it back on, see if we get any life out of it here. Well, the bottom is plastic, and when I squeeze the bottom, I can actually hit the fan and hear the fan grind against the bottom. It's a shame the bottom wasn't made of metal. Because where the slats are at the bottom makes it, the plastic very flexible. So by picking up the machine and squeezing on it, uh, it can make contact with that fan, and then you'll hear the, the grinding sound. Okay, so now it just says no signal at all. So I've made it worse. Um, so here's, here's the deal though. What we've got here is a bleeding edge rocket ship of a computer that's not even available for sale yet. And anytime you're going to get to the bleeding edge and you want to be early, you want to be first, you've got to understand there may be some little teething issues that have gotten through QC, somehow quality assurance or quality control missed it. And it will, I know it will be fixed. But it's going to take some time. First, the manufacturer, uh, AMD, needs to be made aware of it. Then they need to be able to replicate the problem. Then their engineers can go about resolving it. I'm sure that once it's resolved with uh, one manufacturer, it'll resolve across the board with all of them. So what's interesting is we do we get a black screen here, and it doesn't seem to get past this for some reason. And that may be a good excuse to do things a little backwards here, and we'll open it up and take a look at the inside. Let me move some of this out of the way. And this is why we make these videos live, because anybody, anybody can make a video, go through all this 
figuring out stuff. And then, you know, it could take them days, weeks, months to figure it out. And then they piece it all together and make it look like, hey, look at how amazing this is. And I feel that's a little dishonest. What I do want to emphasize is this is not a deal breaker. This is not, I realize for many of you who aren't technicians, you, you might be put off by that. But when you plug this directly into a screen, uh, well, at least that was the case with the GTR7, it worked just fine. So what I think I'm gonna try just for the sake of trying it, is I'm gonna plug this unit directly into my monitor, which means you guys won't be able to see anything for a minute but I'm gonna unplug my video output from the streaming computer and I'm gonna plug it in here to see if my monitor here will display a picture, which it is, uh, it says, okay. It says it's detected a PC, okay. And the screen is black. So we are actually seeing what the machine is putting out. So this may be a good time for a BIOS reset. So I'm gonna grab my little SIM card removal tool, which just also happens to work good as a reset tool. And we'll plug that in here. Ooh, that's kind of springy. Is that supposed to be like that? Well, that switch must be buried in there super deep. Let's see what happens. I've hit the reset on it. Power light is on. Screen has gone completely black. And I know it should be replicating exactly what you're seeing, but I'm kind of working blind right now. Fix my tablet screen over here because my quality is in low resolution for some reason that at 1080. Okay. I'm not sure why we're having this particular issue. Because at this point, we should, I should be getting a signal on my main screen here. So I'm going to unplug the, the external monitor because, oh, here we go. Now I'm getting something. It, it, <laughs> with that external monitor plugged in, that's why it was giving us the black screen. So I'm just kind of curious what this is going to look like if I plug this back in over here. Go here. And then we'll plug the HDMI cable back in over here. So you're definitely going to want Windows installed and running before you try to attach an external monitor up to it like that. And um, okay. So can I stretch this screen? That's the question. I'm gonna try the, the, the USB capture card one more time just to see if maybe it likes it any better now. Let's change our source over to Camlink 4K. Hey, see there it works, okay. So, a little bit of uh, difficulty getting out of the gate here, but we got there and that's all that matters. I'm gonna go full screen over here on my side so I can see everything. And we are English, United States. Well, this is a different keyboard layout uh, setup. I haven't seen one like this before. Arizona time, next. Yeah, I have not seen the setup go like this. There's a problem. Keep keeping us from getting your PC. Make sure your PC's plugged in. Okay, we'll click next. I'm gonna skip this step. I don't want it to force me to create an online account, so I always do not have the computer hooked up to the internet, wired or wireless, during the initial setup phase of Windows 11. Now that's what I'm accustomed to seeing. So United States, yes. States, yes. West keyboard layout, secondary keyboard layout. Skip, I'm gonna say I don't have internet. Continue with limited setup. 
and accept the license agreement. And we'll put the username of user and leave the password blank. And I turn off everything but location settings that'll always keep our date and time accurate, including when daylight saving time takes effect. Also, if I want to say, you know, where's a restaurant near me, it doesn't have to ask me where I am with location settings turned on. It can automatically figure out where I am. So that's just my personal preference. And that gets us to our startup. See a lot of familiar names joining us in the chat. Welcome in, friends. Good to see you. Yes, Nick Poverman has mentioned that four terabyte team group generation three NVMe M.2 drive that I've been ranting and raving about being $186. Today is $168 at Amazon. Holy cow. I'm so tempted to buy more of them, but I have no idea what I would do with them. Get them well, they're cheap, folks. 168 bucks for four terabytes, M.2 Gen 3. Flipper Flop says hello. Al Hedge Depeche says hello. James Prezi says hello. So does Sarge Tech, Paul O'Brien, Jeb, Nick Poverman, V Manor, Leslie Cavins, Log Home, and Dome in 2000. John Williams and Patrick Russo saying hello, as does Martin Wolferts. Come on, if you're watching the show, pop into the chat. Let us know you're watching. Say hello. I'm going to step around and grab my Ethernet cable off of the floor. Because that's where I keep all my cables. It's a very, very sophisticated system of cabling I have here. And we're going to plug that in right back here like this. And we should see that little globe down on the bottom right corner become a little computer screen down here once it gets the connection. And then we're going to go to Windows Update. Oh, that's annoying. Skip sign in for now. I don't know why that started. Accept a license agreement. For what? Okay, for Microsoft Excel, I don't know why Excel started. Weird. Let's close that out. And let's go to Windows Update. Here. And Windows Update. Download and install the cumulative. Okay. Here we go, folks. Barry Klein says the Samsung 970 Pro, or 970 Evo Plus, rather, is now $99. There was a $5 off coupon yesterday. That's right. Yeah, can you imagine that drive, that two terabyte Samsung 970 Evo for $95? Even at $99, that's a bargain. Okay, there's no way we can have all the updates. Come on. It's a brand new machine. It's It's gotta be missing at least the updates from Tuesday. I got to give it to Minis Forum for thankfully giving us an up-to-date operating system on the Mini PC. We've received some here from lesser known manufacturers that are still running last year's version of Windows 11 and they take quite a while to update. And if I go to my, prop, my system properties here, we can verify the configuration of this unit. And we can see that it is the AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS with Radeon 780M graphics. 16 gigs of RAM is installed. That'll be dual channel, so two sticks of eight. It is Windows 11 Pro 22H2 that is installed. And if we take a look at the device manager, we can make sure that we don't have any missing device drivers. So we'll go to device manager. And everything is happy as it should be. So a little problem out of the gate, but again, that has to do with the AMD uh, 780M. It has nothing to do with anything Minis Forum, or for that matter, V-Link has done with their GTR 7. 
And we'll be able to look back on this once the new driver comes out and fixes it, and we'll be able to laugh about it. It's something I've never seen happen before, but anytime we get a PC right now that is this uh, high-end uh, RDNA 3 graphics from AMD, we can expect this to be the common issue. And uh, I will let you know as soon as an updated driver comes out that fixes it. Those of you at home probably will never know the difference one way or the other. This just affects me because I'm going into a capture card. But I do go into capture cards all the time with PCs, new and old, and I've never had this problem before. This is something new. It's new technology. So not a big deal. It won't stay that way forever. Michelle Cote says, carries on a roll with mini PCs lately. Yeah, the rest of this week, it's all mini PCs. And from manufacturers we've never heard of. Tomorrow, there'll be a mini PC from a manufacturer we've never heard of. Not here on the channel. We've never done one from this company before. Tomorrow, the day after that, another one from another company we've never done one from before. And then Friday, of course, the Zulu XR1, which is a brand new entry in the, minis, uh, in the mini PC segment. But today we're focused on this mini Sporum because if you are interested in a little PC that can game or as a content creator has the power to do video editing and photo editing, this little guy is the latest and greatest. Again, its closest competitor is going to be the GTR7 from B-Link and that's physically a larger unit than this. And we'll run Crystal Dismark. We'll see what kind of storage we've got included here. You can buy this as a bare bones unit, so you can put in your own RAM and your own storage if you want to. These will be made available next month. Fred C. Dobbs says hello from Florida. Hey, Fred, welcome in. Dwayne Blackwelder says hello. Steve Miller says hello. Oystein joins us all the way from Norway. So Oystein made it possible for us to give away two of those uh, Morphine M9 systems. And uh, both David and Randy received their units on Sunday. And they couldn't be any happier. They absolutely wanted to give their sincere gratitude and thanks to everyone in the chat and to Oystein for making the giveaway possible. Gary Tatum says, put a couple of those four gig drives in RAID 0. Sounds cool. Well, here's the thing, Gary. Those are Gen 3 drives. Imagine a couple of Gen 4 4 terabyte drives. I was looking and I saw Silicon Power has uh, their 4 terabyte drive on sale at Amazon today. Garfield says, I have either taken leave of my senses, but this seems to be doing better than the other one. Well, that's because I know what to expect now. When we did the first one, everything was a surprise. Now that we're doing this other one based on the same chipset, because we've already traversed this path before, uh, I'm a little better oriented with the direction I'm moving and what to expect and how to be more effective. Uh, this is, like I say, when you do rehearsals or scripting or editing, you could edit all this out and make it look perfect every time. Um, and again, with rehearsals, I could have practiced all this so that when we were ready to film, uh, that it would all go smooth. But the problem is, when you get the machine at home, you're not going to have rehearsals. You're not filming. You're not editing, right? You, you're a consumer. You're buying the product. And I want you to have a realistic expectation of what to expect. And sometimes things, especially the latest and greatest technology, Things sometimes can have a little compatibility issues. But I, what I want to demonstrate through this is it's not really that big of a deal. First and foremost, if you want to be in this class of computer and you want to be early, you want to be a pioneer, you want to be one of the first ones, regardless of any technology, if it's brand new and you're one of the first, do you know you will likely pay more for it? There may be a waiting period for it. Like right now, if you want to order the UM790 Pro, it's not available for sale yet. I mean, you could pre-order it, I guess, 
but it won't ship until next month. So you're queuing up, you're in a line. In a few months time, in all likelihood, these will be widely available, maybe at a cheaper price. There won't be any waiting and hopefully a new driver update will have come out that addresses this issue, even though in all likelihood, the only one that's going to be happy about that is me. You guys probably won't see any difference regardless. But uh, that's just to be expected of anything that's brand new technology. And it's nothing to freak out about regardless. If you're the kind of person that's going to freak out about it, maybe let other people go first. Let's see. Uh, Patrick Manny says, hello from Southwest Ohio. Zach Bischoff says, it's his membership birthday tomorrow. It's six months. Right on, Zach. Very close to my own. And... Uh, Jeb says, greetings from Pinehurst, North Carolina. Carrie, he says, keep an eye on your inbox over the next few days. Oh, I, I look at my inbox numerous times every day. Uh, thank you, Jeb. Ron Barnish says he's late again. That's all right, Ron. Dustin Fuller says, hello from Algonac, Michigan, my home state of Michigan. Steve Mercure says, Carrie, what was the name brand of the USB monitor that you showed? Is it on the Stuff You Use page on Amazon? This monitor is, uh, well, it came up on the screen. You should be able to rewind this video, Steve. And you should be able to see the name. The camera picks it up when it turns on it. Was it InnoView or something like that? The capture card might need an update. No, no, I've tried four different capture cards. Different manufacturers and different models. They all do it. This is the only one so far I've been able to kind of coerce it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it it's not consistent but yeah appreciate the suggestion but been there done that and hopefully we'll be done with this update here soon enough and we'll be able to reboot Tim Teal says the Fangjing S882 terabyte PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive has a 10% coupon right now. That's right. It's had a 10% coupon for the last 10, uh, two weeks. And uh, it's going to say 10 days, but I think it's closer to two weeks. So it's like $91. You click the coupon on Amazon, you get $9 and some odd change off. So it's like 81 bucks or whatever, which is what it was selling for before anyway. And I'm really liking those Beijing drives. They are fast. They're using name brand uh, and, and controllers, and they're fast. You know, look at Western Digital's uh, version of uh, like the SN850X, which is similar in performance, and look at the price difference. Jen English says, uh, I deleted the video driver on the GTR7 and it worked. Well, it didn't really work, John. What we did is by removing the AMD driver, Windows defaults to a very limited basic video driver, which hinders the performance of the machine. And that means we can't increase the resolution and we're not gonna be running at the performance levels. So this isn't just a matter of making the video fit on the screen because in using the basic driver, it's like saying never take your car out of first gear and you'll never have a problem. That to me is not a fix, but we do know it's driver related. It's not a BIOS issue. Uh, it's not a capture card issue. It's not a problem with my cables. It's not a problem with the configuration of the machine. It's not the manufacturer. This is, AMD is the source of this problem. And if you wonder why I keep going back to Intel, it's stuff like this, honestly. I've never seen these kinds of problems with Intel, and I know the AMD fanboys don't like to hear this stuff, but the fact of the matter is you're going to run into some unique problems on the AMD platform, and um, this is proof of that. 
Now, that's not to say that the AMD platform is not as good. It's just that if you're running a business like I am and you're selling machines to customers and those machines run into problems, it makes you look incompetent, makes it look like you don't know what you're doing, and it's going to cost you money when your customers call you for that in-warranty support. And if there's not much money to be made on this to begin with, then any support call, you're already losing money. You might as well just pack up your stuff and shut your business down. But when the AMD systems work, they work fantastic when it comes to uh, running at the speeds they're supposed to be running at. AMD's had a problem with that in the past. Uh, memory compatibility issues, AMD's had a problem with that in the past. Uh, and now we've got another driver-related problem. Uh, AMD Radeon cards have had driver-related problems going all the way back to I don't know when. And if you don't mind that, have fun. But uh, when I work with AMD systems now, I'm always ready for the worst. Like, I'm always ready to say, okay, what kind of weirdo, kind of bizarre problem am I going to have? Because I know it'll be unique to AMD. But if you're gaming and you want the best integrated GPU, Intel can't touch the performance levels. They don't even come close with Intel's integrated GPU compared to AMD's. AMD just smokes them as far as integrated GPUs go. So just food for thought there. And uh, what are we doing now? Chose to restart. My screen went black. We've been through this before. I'm going to just give this a minute in case it's installing updates. Uh, bear with me just a minute, guys. Just had a UPS was here dropping off a package. All right, so now, sort of back to this same situation. I don't see a hard drive activity light indicating that anything's happening. So I'm going to borrow my monitor one more time here. We're going to come out of this. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm going to put that back. Put that back. That's not the one I wanted. And I want to borrow monitor cable and we're gonna, I want to go straight out of the mini PC straight to my my monitor where you guys can't see I want to see if it's going to give me a picture yeah I am at the Windows desktop right now that's interesting that is just this blows my mind see even with the other capture card sometimes it just doesn't work and um Go back to Windows updates while we're waiting. And let me plug this back in over here. So I know I've got a video signal out that is working when it's plugged directly into the monitor. But it doesn't like to work being plugged into any capture card at all. And I find that fascinating, positively fascinating. So by resetting the capture card, the USB capture card, without unplugging anything, now the, the signal's coming through. And again, um, 
and this is a consistent problem with that 780M. So we're all up to date here. And let me go over here and close this and grab my utilities flash drive and we'll copy over a couple of things. Let's see. Use the right mouse to the utilities flash drive. Why does this have a drive D? Does this have partition? Does it have two drives? I guess we're about to find out. I like to put VLC on here, so we'll grab VLC and move it over. Grab Uncle Carrie's Windows 10 optimizer, even though this is Windows 11, it won't hurt anything to run that. And I want let's see, PC testing software. We'll grab uh, CPU Z, Crystal Disk Info, Crystal Disk Mark, Hardware Info. There. Okay. Check this. Let's see what Crystal Disk Info says about the storage, because I don't know what Minis Forum is using, what brand. It's a Kingston. Okay, so they're using a name brand Kingston 256 gig drive and they're using two of them two identical models oh this is, this is interesting it's got a crystal disk mark and let's see what kind of performance we get out of these bad boys Obviously it's Gen 4, but it's a, it's a low-end Gen 4. The smaller the solid-state drive is, the slower it is. So if you have the same make and model of drive, like let's say this particular Kingston brand comes in multiple different capacity configurations, 256, 512, one gig, uh, sorry, one terabyte, two terabytes, four terabytes, each size that's bigger runs faster than the same model of a smaller capacity. That's true of all NVMe storage. It's just kind of the way it works. So we're going to open this up here shortly. In the meantime, I should be able to plug this monitor in now that we have Windows up and running. And we should get a video here on the screen. Yeah, the driver just loaded there. And just a minute, I think we'll get a display here. May have to let's see. Go full screen so I can see it a little closer. Right click. Display settings. Uh, let's duplicate the displays. Hmm. A picture? Hmm. No picture. Try the other. Should be giving us a picture. Isn't. You can see the driver loads when you watch the video resize itself like that. Um, yeah, the write speeds on this is not good. It's a shame that 
almost universally, the mini PC manufacturers are putting in bargain basement NVMe drives or solid state drives in general that hinder the performance of the unit. So I can tell you right now, if we replace the NVMe drives in this, it'll run faster, even though it's pretty fast right now. These drives are holding the performance up of this unit, just so you know. So it might be best to get a bare bones unit if you're worried about that. You want to get the best performance out of it. Uh, let's see, back over to display settings and see if I have to reset that again. Right click, display settings. It shows it's being outputted here. Identify monitor one and two. Got nothing. It is not working. Well, it's all right. We're going to keep the test moving forward. As long as we've got some video display, then we can march forward with the review note differently. On the back of the unit, I want to remind you guys, you don't need to ask questions about what ports are on the back of the unit. You can rewind this live video as I go over all the ports. You're also welcome to click on the link in the video description, which has a close-up of all the ports and, and uh, details. Um, but no, there's not a Type-C port on the back. There's only two Type-C ports that are on the front. There's no Type-A ports on the front. James Prezi wants to know, would we have to buy laptop RAM for the bare bones or is it regular RAM? It's laptop RAM for sure. It's going to be SO DIMM memory on all the minis universally. They are using laptop processors, laptop CPUs. These are not the kind of CPUs you can go to Amazon or Newegg and buy. These CPUs, just like a laptop, are the same as what's used in laptops. Hence, the RAM is the same as what's used in laptops. And any sort of built-in graphics is the same as what's used in uh, laptops as well. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want a desktop CPU in a mini environment because it'll consume more power and, and generate more heat. This is far more ideal for a mini PC scenario um, for all of those reasons. It's smaller, it's cheaper, it's easier to cool, it uses less power. So there's our final numbers. So 3929, not exactly a screamer, is it? Oops, put <laughs> that back. Um, okay. I think what I want to do now, we're gonna, I'm going to get this mini, this monitor out of here rather, because it's in my way. I want to open the mini PC up and take a look at the inside of it. And uh, yeah, let's do that now. I'll just take this and place it over here. Hopefully I won't knock it over. And then let's bring this over here. And full screen over here for a second so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna close this. Shut this down. We'll come back to all this stuff later. Shut this down. That. Then we'll go full screen on camera one. Okay. This should be off, and it is. So I'll unplug this, unplug this, unplug this. I'll unplug my keyboard and mouse. And then we'll get the overhead camera set up here. Here, overhead, whoops. It's like that. Cable into it so we can see it. And I'll turn this on. Get all this out of my way here. Uh, 
Let's go to close up camera. There it is. So these little rubber feet, these just pull up. They're just stuck on with tape. They're all the same, so it doesn't matter if you put them back in the same corner or in any particular orientation. And that exposes the four screws we need. So let's see what this thing is made of, shall we? So we shall. Wow, that is a big screw. There's one. There's two. We appreciate that we don't have thread going all the way up the screw. So these aren't that big of a deal as far as how much effort it takes to remove them. I've seen them where they use these two inch long screws and you gotta unscrew two inches of thread. Okay, so now we gotta figure out, oh, there's a little, I don't know the camera's picking that up. There's a, right here where it says rear, there's a little cutout. You can get something underneath. Lift up on this. Be careful, there is a wire running to that cooling fan. And then the Wi-Fi antennas, these two wires here. So now looking inside, we have our two NVMe Kingston drives here. We've got heat sink here for something. This is one of our RAM modules. A Pacer is the name of the RAM. Let's take out this Kingston. So that's what you get if you order it with this configuration. This is the Wi-Fi card here, which is fully upgradable. Let's take out the other one. Okay, so there's our original Kingston. And there is, it's hard for me to show you this, I gotta remove this fan power cable here. And you can see we have thermal tape that goes over the two NVMe drives. And that's a big heat sink right there to help dissipate the heat off of those drives. So what should we put in there? How about, I mean, let's go big or go home. There's a couple of Western Digital Blacks. Well, these have a heat sink on them already. You know what, that's not gonna be, Let's get one that doesn't already have a heat sink. Let me go back here and we'll grab, um, well, let's do those phasing drives. Yeah, let's do that. Maybe we can get camera girl in here and get her to hold the camera for us so we can get better shots. But these are the, uh, Couple of the S880s we were talking about, these are $91 on Amazon. They've got a five year warranty. These are two terabytes each and run at darn near similar read and write speeds as that Western Digital I just showed you. So let me go back to camera one here for a moment. Let me move this camera out of the way. So let me bring this in. Oh, I got a foot stuck on my wrist. There's a foot on my wrist. Let's go here. It's so confusing. Let's move it this way. <laughs> Get it out of the shot. Hey. 
that's out of the way. Pizza 412 said, I wish I could afford this box. I truly love it. Hey, you know what? It's a great deal for the amount of processing power and graphics you're getting, especially if you're into gaming or content creation. So there's my OneDrive there. Yeah, I'll just sit it down here. Let's open this other one up. Brian wants to know if I see a time when desktop PCs are no desktop PCs are no longer available. No. Um, that's only something a consumer would ask. Nobody in business would ever ask that question. And businesses far out by consumers, probably hundred to one. So, for business needs, I don't think the desktop PC is going away anytime in my lifetime. I could be wrong, but for consumers, yeah, a lot of consumers can move to these now. They're save you some money and um, save you some space too. All right, camera girl, are you ready to get to ready? work? All right, come on over. She is. Hi. Hi. Well, here is the mini PC today. And I am about to put these two phaging I know that looks like it says Ranchiana, but that first letter is an F and the last letter is a G. Why they did that. And these are both blank, blank. There's no partition and no format on either one of them. And they're both two terabytes each. I want to configure these in a RAID 0 array. And let me get places back on so as I can see. There's one. There's two. Oh, there's Wi Fi cables. Be careful with your Wi Fi cables, folks. They're very easily yanked right off of their. Uh, if you look on the lid, they're soldered down onto the lid. Whoops, I hit a button. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> I think my belly's getting too big. Okay, and don't, don't over-tighten these screws here, guys. They're just there to secure the driving position. It doesn't have to be watertight. But yeah, if you look down here, these are the antenna cables coming off the Wi-Fi card. And so these are the antennas built into the, pla the plastic lid. And I was mentioning this plastic right here. It's flexible. And so when I was grabbing it, picking it up, I was hitting the blades of the fan with it. So be mindful of that. Now I could upgrade the RAM while we're in here. This is, I've never seen what this is before. Look at this. It's like a weird, oh, I see. So this is a heat sink for the RAM. Look at that. So it's got the sticky tape there and this thermal tape there. Let's see what I, what do I have for RAM that I could put in there? Let's go crazy. You know what? I've got a kit of 32 right here from Silicon Power, which I think will work fine. Oh, wait, this has got to be DDR5. Oh, DDR5. Do I have DDR5 in SO DIM? Well, I do. Also, from Silicon Power, I've got 64 gigs of DDR5. This is uh, only 4,800 speed. What are we taking out? 5,600? Uh, let me just double check and make sure I don't have anything faster. Let's see what's in my stack of RAM. No, it's all 4,800, 4,800. Well, if you wanted to use this for gaming, you definitely want faster RAM. 
So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the RAM as is, given that the heat sink's already kind of stuck to it here. I'm going to put it back the way it was and get the RAID 0 set up first, and then I'll revisit this. You want to make sure that's fully seated, and then it locks down. Make sure that that's fully seated into the socket, and then push down. Okay. Then, right here is our fan connector. This, once again, is the underside. Wish we, they'd have given us a little bit more cable there, but uh, I've had worse. You definitely want to make sure or be mindful of your Wi-Fi wires here because we don't want to trap them between the thermal tape. hair it was on there this is to the rear sure that my wires for the Wi-Fi aren't going to be competing with tape. Hmm. With that fan plugged in, it doesn't give me a lot to uh, play with here. That little clips so i'm going to leave the screws out of it for now because i might just open it back up when we're done here and add some more or swap the ram out rather wishful thinking right that this will go so smoothly that we're going to do that next stay positive totally happy okay so power can go back in keyboard and mouse can go back in Then, let's see, I'm going to need a Windows 11 installation media. Um, I'm going to leave the internet unplugged. Then we will plug in the HDMI cable. Camera girl standing on it. Standing on it with the other foot now. Sorry. <laughs> okay. plug that into either one of these ports back here. Okay, you ready? Hey. So hit the power button. Then we will go to HDMI input. And let's see if we get a screen here. I want to turn camera one back on. You can uh, move out of the way. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Everybody gets to see your tattoos. Uh, let me put this back up here. So. Now, in theory, this machine will boot to just the Windows installation media. However, I don't want to install Windows yet. I want to create the RAID array first. 
So um, I need to get into the BIOS. I'm going to do that without being able to see the screen. Maybe another little trick. So what I'm going to do, once again, I'm going to borrow my streaming computer's output that's direct to the monitor. It seems to get us out the gate to get us where we need to be, and then I can plug it back in. Yeah, so we are at the Windows setup screen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, unplug the unit. Wait a second. Plug it back in. Then I'm going to hit the power button. And then I'll start pressing delete. It's probably delete. So even my monitor has a hard time seeing this. Um, I have to push a button on the remote and then it synchronizes. So some weird video signal, video output signal. Now I've got the display up. So that means I can put this back over here. And I'll plug this one back over here. And then I go into my OBS software under my HDMI input properties, change it to literally anything else, put it back to CamLink 4K. Yeah, it's really weird that that does the trick, but. This is what the BIOS looks like. Let me turn off camera one so we can see the BIOS in full here. And our, our mouse does work in the BIOS. Under setup. BIOS version 1.0. I'd say that's new, huh? Buttery. Memory frequency 5600, 16 gigs, processor speed 4 gigahertz, under advanced. Maybe I should just use the keyboard. Maybe that'll make my life easier. Advanced. NVMe RAID mode. Let's go to that. Enabled. <laughs> You just touch the mouse a little bit and it moves six inches. All right. Enabled. All fine. I don't think we need to change anything under security. We need to change anything under boot. It's the Windows 11 install media. Let's go back out of setup. Save first. Save and exit. Okay. This should get interesting. You're probably going to need a RAID driver. Let's see what happens. Next, install now. It's 11 Pro. Next. Custom. So it still sees two drives. All right, so we enabled the RAID configuration, but we haven't set up a RAID array yet. So I'm going to unplug power. I'm gonna remove my Windows 11 media here for a second. I know the screen is dark here, bear with me. You're not afraid of the dark, are you? 
We're going to boot it up one more time. We're going to go back into the BIOS. Now that we've saved it with RAID mode enabled, now the BIOS should have options for how we set up the RAID. That's very common that you would need to turn it on, save and exit, go back in, and then configure it. So we've got UEFI shell, we've got uh, boot options, EBS menu. This menu is, let's go back, back over to setup, and we'll go to advanced. Oops advanced okay so nvme is in raid okay so now we have the raid expert 2 configuration utility so i guess i don't think that was there before i think after we enabled and then saved and exited when we come back in we now have the raid configuration select to configure okay nvme controllers 2 controller management what is controller management New controller information. I mean, that's just interesting, but nothing that we need. Array management. Manage array property. Well, manage array. Um, we don't have an array yet. Raid configuration. Physical disk management. Select physical disk operations. Happening there. Under array management should be where we create an array. So this creates an array by selecting the RAID level physical disk and array properties. Okay. Select an array, array one, two. Um, it's a little tricky. Let's delete any arrays. Check all. Delete the arrays. Sure. Firm. Leading an array may take up to 15 seconds. After selecting yes, please wait for the operation to complete. <laughs> Where is yes? Hello. Delete. Confirm. Oh, then I guess I click yes up there. No arrays are found. Good, good, good. That's the way I want it. So, raid mode. All we have is enabled and disabled here. Okay? So, there's nothing more to change there. It's Everything else has to be done under the raid expert to configuration utility. Should be under array management. Now, create array is available to us. All right, select RAID level. We want RAID zero for performance. Select the physical disks. We want both disks. So check all. My changes. And it defaults the array size. 256K, uh, can't do 512. Yeah, I think we're all good. Let's go ahead and create the array. I deal with very large files, so for me, uh, I like a big cluster size. Okay, RAID has now been created, so we can be able to save and exit. And I'm going to plug my Windows 11 boot media back in. And I suspect it's not going to see the RAID, but let's find out. 
Martin says booting from a hardware RAID, playing with fire, for sure. I don't recommend booting from a RAID drive because it can make any sort of repair of the operating system very difficult. But let's see what happens. I'm kind of curious if Windows will see the RAID array. I don't think it will without a driver. So let me just verify that now. Interestingly, it still shows two drives, which is interesting. It should just show us one drive of a four terabyte or yeah, 4,000 gigabyte capacity. So that suggests to me that did we not create the RAID array, array correctly? Or is it that I have to load the driver? You see down here, there's always been this option called load driver. Maybe you didn't know what that was for. But it's so you can see special controllers like RAID controllers and whatnot. So what I'm going to do, I'll put camera one back up here. Just a moment. And I'm not worried about losing anything at this point. So I can just pull the power and pull my flash drive. And let me put power back on here. Let's see, what do I want to do? Let's go to screen on camera one. Minis Forum UM790 Pro Drivers. I don't know if they have the drivers posted yet since it's not available for sale. Let's go to Minis Forum Support and see if it's in here. It's Venus Series, right? It's the 690. UM790 Pro, they've got the drivers right on. So I will share the screen with you so you can see what I'm doing here. Here we go. There's our link up here. Specifications, let's go to Downloads. Windows, it looks like, wow, that is a massive file here. This is gonna have all the drivers in one giant package. It's gonna take a while. This right here may be, oh, that's what we want, the RAID driver. I'm gonna grab all three of these files because I'm not sure what they are, but we definitely want that RAID driver. We're gonna need that. And let me extract this. And it's for Windows 11. This other driver is FEBSC. All right, we're going to have a few minutes of waiting while that takes place. In the meantime, I can copy that driver onto a flash drive because we're going to need that for our Windows install to see the RAID array. It's not work just fine for that purpose. Let's go back over to camera one. Go to my downloads, a driver. It's a quick start guide. I guess we'll just take the whole RAID folder. 
and copy that onto this flash drive. What am I doing? I'm not in that computer <laughs> over here on this one. Ah, I'm getting confused. That never happens. All right, let me try that again. There we go. Close that. Close that. Now we have the RAID drivers right here. And well, that's downloading. Robert said that's a Windows 11 system image. Oh, yeah, that, that would explain its file size for sure. And the other driver, I wonder what that is. Let's see. Still downloading. We're going to be downloading that for a little while. If your picture looks blurry, it's because your YouTube resolution is set too low. Click the gear icon on the corner of the video and make sure you select 1080p as your video resolution. And we're probably having, having some buffering occurring because we are downloading these big files. The good news is we're using the fast internet connection, so it shouldn't take very long. So hang in there. It'll buffer for a little bit. I'm going to grab a cold Gatorade. Let's see what the UPS man brought me. It's something from Newegg. Yeah, I saw that. I don't remember ordering anything from Newegg, but must have. Oh, it's a mini PC. Thirteenth gen Intel Nook. All right. Um, yeah, you want to build a thumbnail for me? What are you doing over here? Okay, so the one file did finish downloading. Let me see what this is. These are the drivers. Okay. And then the other one is the system image. So I'm going to cancel that one because that's going to take quite a while to download. Uh, we shouldn't need that one during today's video. And then that'll prevent the, uh, that'll cure the buffering issue because we're using a lot of bandwidth uploading and downloading uh, heavy content simultaneously is affecting the broadcast. So we'll procrastinate that for later. page yeah all that buffering should be over with now so windows 11 and the raid drivers See what happens. Turn the power on. HDMI input. Smaller on the screen here. 
And I'm going to, oh no, I'll wait. I'll wait. Let me do this first. Screen over here for Uncle Kerry so he can see. Next, install. Don't have product key. It's 11 Pro. Accept the license agreement. Custom. Okay, now let me plug in the flash drive that I just copied the RAID drivers over to. And I'm going to say load driver. Browse. Hmm. This one. Yes. Browse. No signed device drivers were found. Okay. Must be missing a step. Let me go back full screen here on camera one. And turn this back off again. Bear with me for a second. I want to copy the drivers folder over that I downloaded here onto this flash drive. So we keep all the drivers for this uh, UM790 together on this one flash drive. So that's in my downloads. Copy that. Paste it in here. And while we're waiting, screen camera one and downloads directory Envy me or quick start guide. Let's see, we'll go to Windows Capture. Let's see if we can read through this documentation together here. Hang on, I'm just about there. There it is. Copy the AMD RAID drivers to removable storage. Okay, we're ahead of them. To enable RAID mode, access the BIOS.
this is just the manufacturer of the RAID controller uh, explaining how to do this for different uh, chipsets that their controller might be used on. Done all that. Don't need to do any of that. I wonder if I have to select the actual driver manually versus, uh, you know, I'm accustomed to Windows finding it, you know, once you point it to the directory. So that may be the step I missed. So let me plug this mini PC back in and let's turn it back on and we'll start the Windows 11 install one more time. And uh, that. Back over to camera one. There we are. Go back to HDMI input, camera one. Ooh, that thing is quick. Wasn't expecting it to be waiting for me. All right, let me go full screen over here so I can see it. And yeah, we're gonna go through this one more time. Next, install. Product key, pro, next, accept the license agreement, next, custom. Okay, now let me grab my flash drive that I put down somewhere. streaming computer. <laughs> Hold on a second. I got to close the file out. Let's close that one out. Let's close that out. Should be able to eject it from the streaming computer. Okay, and then we'll plug it in over here onto the minis forum. Go here. And let me go full screen again. Go driver, browse, read. That's better. Yeah, so I have to pick it. So now it's going to load that driver and inject it into our Windows 11 setup. And in theory, when it comes back, I hope it will see. Huh, don't see anything yet. So let's load another driver. Browse. And let's do the next one. Raid driver, Windows 11, 64. Be me. That one. Click OK. And now the third one, browse, USB drive, made driver, 60, ME. Next. And let's see what happens here.
There it is. So now instead of seeing two drives, we have the both drives combined into what Windows sees as one large four terabyte drive. And we can continue our Windows 11 install the same way we go. Everything's the same from this point forward. That wasn't too bad. I just didn't realize I had to manually select the drivers. I thought pointing it into the directory would search, but um, that's when you're in Windows and you're like trying to load drivers in your device manager, you need only point it to the master parent directory. But here during setup, you have to be quite precise. And then I'm gonna grab another old Gatorade while we're waiting. So I'm just going off of memory and I've set these, I don't know how many RAID arrays I've set up in my life, but uh, it's been a while. So I'm a little rusty, so bear with me here. And sometimes they change the processes, but so far this is installing the same as a RAID controller on Windows XP. Nothing's any different. Now, when it reboots, in theory, it should boot from the internal RAID drive. And to ensure that it does, I can unplug these flash drives. And we'll just keep them right over there. We'll keep them handy in case we need them again. This is our first startup now loading off that new RAID array that's been uh, partitioned, formatted by Windows 11. With the circle going around, the little toilet bowl flushing is what I think it looks like. Uh, that tells us it's loading the configuration from the local array now. Just finish this little Gatorade. I guess I'll go grab another one. All right, we're getting there. Rebooting. Look at that. It's pretty quick. All right, United States. Yes. United States. Skip. Ah, it wants me to create the online account. So we hit shift F10 and we type in OOBE, is it forward slash or backslash, backslash. Um, made a note of that command, bypass NRO. Is it a forward slash, backslash? So. O O B E bypass R O. That's adding an entry to our registry and restarting the computer. It's kind of a weird way Microsoft has implemented this, um, but it's essentially just making a change to the registry and causing a reboot. So then when we go through the Windows setup again, we'll have the option to bypass the um, network requirement for Windows setup.
And so we're going to start that again, where it's going to ask our language, you know, region, et cetera. Okay, United States, yes. US, yes. Skip. I don't have internet. See, that option appears now. Continue with limited setup. Username of user, enter. Enter. But you know what I do here. That location setting on. Okay, so when we get to the desktop, then I can copy over the rest of the drivers that we need for the chipset, video, sound, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can run Crystal Disk Mark again and uh, see if it doesn't blow our minds. V says, try to see if AMD will suggest for new driver with the AMD driver auto detect tool. I've already tried that um, on the GTR 7. I don't believe AMD is aware that they have an issue. Uh, it is possible that, you know, since the last time I checked, something has come out, but I doubt it. I think it's going to take about two months, say six to eight weeks likely before we see a fix for it. Just in my history of going through this similar type situations, that's what I suspect it is. Or that's what I suspect the wait time is going to be or what the process is and, and getting them to acknowledge it, to fix it, and then to release the driver. And I think if they do it that quickly, that would be great. You know, if it's only going to take six to eight weeks. But in the meantime, we're back up at the desktop. So I'm going to plug in my flash drive and we'll copy over the driver's directory here. I'll just take both files, both folders, we'll copy them both. And we'll go over here to the downloads, paste those. Now, on a fresh, clean install of Windows 11 on a brand new build like this, we're likely going to have a lot of items that Windows does not know what they are that will be question marks in our device manager. And sure enough, there's our RAID controller, um, multimedia controllers, PCI devices, SM bus controller. So as we load these drivers, you should see all of these all go away. So this is the driver directory. And I guess we can just start at, uh, actually, I think I want to start at the bottom. Let's start with the AMD chipset driver first. Click install. Mm, let's see if too much. It's administrator, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, it's doing something. Okay. And then let's go to AMD. Well, I'm going to save that one for last. Do tech audio, install package, administrator, yes. Back to the next one, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth driver. Double click on that one. Yes. Next, three, next, eight, install.
far so good. We're down to, looks like three items here in the device manager. This may also be replacing um, center. Check that. Finish. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll restart it. Uh, this may be also replacing device drivers that Windows 11 did find, but that these are customized for the unit. They might be newer or more optimized for the unit. We're getting there. Downloads our drivers. And where did we leave off? We left off here, so now we can do the Ethernet driver. Right click, it's administrator, yes. Tech Audio Application, right click, it's Administrator. Okay. Device Manager. Couple of items still with issues. And probably introduce some issues here. The graphics driver. Let's see what happens. Ron Barnish sends an Amazon gift card of $20. He says, hope you enjoy. It's a little more than normal. Rich uncle got out of the poorhouse. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Stall. Hmm. Guess it's windy outside. My security camera went off there, but there's nothing going on, so it's all good. All right. Yeah, you can obviously tell we have a driver-related problem here. Changing the input source. We'll go to camera three for a minute. Cam link. Yeah, <laughs> it's just weird. Okay. Um, obviously, the resolution changed. And it wants a restart. Now we'll see if our where our troubles begin here. Oh, well, we've got a different color. That's something. Try again to change the input, change it back. So weird. All right, well, it certainly boots fast, but I know we're not done with the drivers just yet. Let's see, device manager, Let's see what else is missing. 
So that apparently took care of one of them. So this unknown device, what I can do here is click update driver, browse the computer, and then just hit the downloads directory and let it search everything. Hit next. So whatever that is, it's not recognizing it. It's not telling us what it is. And it seems like something that's been left out of the driver package for some reason. Not to worry, I have other workarounds. Um, let's see if we go to, back to my downloads again. Have the app in here or is it just yeah these are just the drivers do i get that controller driver? Out of curiosity, because it's just killing me, I gotta know. Let me take this out here. This in here. We're not fully tuned up yet, but I just, I'm kind of curious what we're doing on Crystal Dismark with this controller. That Crystal Dismark there. this. All right, you guys ready? Let's see what kind of numbers we're going to get here. These are the two Fengjing two terabyte NVMe drives that'll do over 7,000 each. Combined, we're at 13,720 megabytes per second. Holy cow. That's faster than the Gen 5 drives that are on the market right now. Wow, look at that. How cool is that? Michael Dane said I was upset when my AMD CPU died, but everything happens for a Ryzen. That's funny. I hope those of you that are watching and reading the chat understand why I was ignoring all the people telling me what I needed to do to get the raid working. I did not do what they suggested, and this is how I always set up raid. And it would start to get under my skin to have people telling me what to do when I already know what to do. And there's multiple ways to accomplish the same thing. Some people want to follow directions word for word. Some people want to follow rituals. Uh, I go through the process that I'm familiar with from past rate of configurations. And I see if that works first. And then if I'm having difficulty, then I'll go to the chat room. So for people in the chat offering up suggestions, I just want you to be aware um, I'm not going to say the suggestions were wrong, but I do want to say that if you want the same results that you see me get, you should follow the same steps that I follow. Um, I have always set up RAID the same way. If you go back and watch the original Threadripper build, when we set up the three Samsung 860 NVMEs, those were 500 gigs apiece. It's a very similar configuration, and they all mostly set up the same. So it's you know, you shouldn't have to guess. It should be pretty obvious. Now, write speeds, quite a bit slower than our read speeds here at 9207, but still, that's nothing to shake a stick at. That's very impressive. So we've got uh, 
yeah, we're using both drives in here, the uh, both two terabyte drives. Problem is, if one drive fails, we lose everything. So backups are really important. You're going to want to create a Windows rescue disk that will utilize this driver because if you ever need to recover your operating system, repair your operating system, nothing you boot to will ever see your operating system without that driver loading as part of the boot process. So this makes booting from a RAID array a really bad idea. But as long as this machine is going to be used for non-critical stuff, I can't imagine it's going to be much of a problem, but if you're the tinkering type and you like to click on things and download and experiment, you absolutely do not want to have a RAID 0 array. Or at the very least, use something like a Cronus to make an image of your RAID array. Once you've got your operating system and drivers and everything installed the way you like it, make a system image backup. And then do know that in order to recover your system image backup, you will need a, a boot CD that has the RAID array driver on it or there'll be nothing to recover to. It won't, it'll just see the two individual drives. You want it to see the drives working together in a RAID array, then you have to have the driver on anything you boot from. Any sort of rescue disk, any sort of utility, anything that you boot from must have the RAID driver as part of its boot process where you cannot see your storage. And that's why it makes it a pain in the rear end, right? Something we take for granted, oh, we'll download a utility online, we'll use that to fix our computer, and then it can't get it to even see your drives. So that RAID driver is absolutely critical, and you want to make those boot disks while your system works, because trying to do it after the system crashes makes a complicated job even more complicated. Ask me how I know. Now, for a system like this that's not playing a, a critical role, what I would likely do is once I have all my drivers set up and, and get the system configured the way I like it, I'll use Acronis and make a system image of it. But I also have to make a special Acronis rescue disk with the RAID driver injected into it. And Acronis offers you that option during the media creation process to add any added drivers to the boot media. So they make it really simple. And that will only be good, well, I mean, in theory, I could replace all of my Acronis boot media with one with that driver because loading it when you don't need it doesn't hurt anything. But it does add an extra step. It adds an extra level of complexity, but then you get these amazing numbers. Now, I'm going to show you a little shortcut to make life easier when it comes to the devices that haven't been found. So we go back to Device Manager. You know, we still have... There's at least one device here that's not found, this unknown driver for whatever that is. And a little disconcerting that there appears to be a driver missing in the driver package from Mini's forum. And well, I'll make them aware of it. They'll, they'll see this video. But uh, what we can do, since I took the drives out that were in it, one of these is just a, a formatted drive and the other one has our operating system. And I can grab, a USB enclosure, in this case the Silverstone TS16. No, oh, I'm missing my. Uh... It's got a little nubbin that holds the drive in place, and I must have dropped it, so I think it's in here somewhere. Well, I'm glad they give me a spare because I don't know where it went. I'll use the spare one. I'm sure the other one will turn up somewhere. So slide that in here like this. I don't know which of these drives has the OS on it. But the OS had all the drivers already installed from the factory, which means we can extract those drivers right off the original media. So I'm going to plug this into our Type-C port up front. Turn that on, then I'm going to find out, yep, yeah, I got lucky, so this is the blank one. And so what we can do is we can go to unknown device. You want to talk about cheating. Check this out. Put a driver, update my driver, browse the computer, browse where? We're going to browse. 
that drive I just plugged in right here under Windows, under System. Should be in here somewhere. Just click OK and click Next and let it just search through all of that. Uh, wait a minute. Sir, uh, browse my computer. Let's hit Browse again. System 32 I meant to pick, and then click Next. Now it's going to search the System 32 folder and all of the subfolders and all of their subfolders and all of their subfolders, and it was the Bluetooth driver. That's what apparently didn't get loaded for some reason. Now what's going on here? Why does this driver stick out? Let's update driver, browse, and let's just search the download directory to see if it's in either of the packages I downloaded. So we'll go to downloads folder, click OK, and let it search all of the subdirectories. Have it. Now everything should be happy. If I close this out, right click and go to device manager, everything is happy. Now we definitely want that RAID configuration utility so we have some idea of what's going on with the RAID and its status. But before we do that, there's a couple other things I wanted to do. Let's go ahead and eject our operating uh, our NVMe drive that's in the USB controller here. Power button to turn that off and move it. Okay. So that worked well. We'll keep that over there in case we need it again. I want to grab my SanDisk external drive that supposedly does 2,000 megabytes per second. And I want to see how it performs on the UM790. I've only had one system where this thing actually showed uh, 2,000 megabytes per second. This is the SanDisk Extreme Pro Portable SSD. And I'm hopeful, but I'm not holding my breath. Let's plug that in. And let's bring up Crystal Disk Mark. Got to use the right mouse, though, don't I? So there's nothing on this drive. Smart 64, yes. Let's choose D drive. And we'll just do the two top tests here. So we usually get 1,000. On most computers, we plug this into a little over 1,000. But we have seen 2,000 one time. And I'm sure we'd like to see 2,000 again. Now we're still stuck there for some reason. Let me stop this. And out of curiosity, I want to try um, let's disconnect it first. Eject it. I know you don't normally have to do that, but this is an expensive drive, and so I'm being a little extra cautious, kind of babying it a little bit. And let's try the USB Type C. Uh, I mean, the USB Type A port in the back. I'm just kind of curious if that gives us any better performance or not. Let's try it again. I don't suspect it's going to be any better. Yeah, it's more or less the same. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to have to do my own little research on the side to figure out what was different about that one machine that we got to see 2,000 on. Not that 1,000 is anything to shake a stick at. If we're moving data externally. It's still fast, but... In theory, we should be able to go even faster. And now that we have that new driver put in, I'm just kind of curious if that impacts our performance at all here. I don't think it's going to make any difference. Thirteen thousand. Look at the data transfer rate on this.
That's two of those Fengjing drives in RAID 0 in this little tiny computer. No words. That's awesome. <laughs> the RAID speed's a bit slower, but still nothing to shake a stick at. We got a little over 9,000 last time. Yeah. Not too shabby. Good. And I might be able to improve that if there's caching modes or things I can turn on with the RAID software. i got to figure out where to get the RAID software. Let's see. Uh, the drives? Yeah. Oh, I, I have no idea. But if the drives, if heat was a problem, we would certainly see the, the numbers fall. Um, let's see if we go to settings. Let's just do the right, just to see if the read speed is affecting the write speed. In other words, if we're generating so much heat on the read that it's affecting the write slowing down a little bit because of heat, no, it's pretty much not being affected by heat. You'd know because the, it would, the, the numbers would plummet. So we're good on heat, and it's got a heat sink on it anyway. Okay, cool. With the uh, the lid has thermal tape and a yeah. fan blowing right on them, cool. so they're well within where they should be. Um, okay, so I still need that driver software. Let me go plug the internet into this, and we'll download some updates. I may just keep it like this. I mean, why not? Anybody can have a mini PC, but how many people have a mini PC with a RAID array? Come on. Maybe even bump the RAM up to 64 gigs, and then yeah. that's going to be a, a Hulk. Let's see, there we go. I wonder where that little rubber piece went to my NVMe, my TS-16. Grab a flashlight and take a quick look while I'm waiting on this. If you have any questions for me in the chat room, please go ahead and ask now. and I will do my best to provide an answer for you. Oh, you know what? It was right here. Okay, so I... I still have a spare. That's good. <laughs> they, folks at Silverstone, they give you two of those. And I hate the idea of losing one of them and then not having a spare. I always like to have a spare. We're, we're good. All right. Yeah, if you have any questions for me, if you have any questions about the unit, um, the, probably the graphics on this are going to be equivalent to a low-end, I don't know, like a low-memory 3060. So... 1080 gaming on it should not be a problem. Of course, that depends on the game and the settings within the game. And then the last thing I want to put on here after we do the updates is going to be the uh, RAID configuration software, which I was going to look for. I suppose we can do that while we're waiting. I've been wanting to set up RAID 0 on one of these for... For a long time and so congrats to minis forum for being the first to make that available of all the machines we've run where we can actually put a raid zero config in here and it, it's gen 4 you know that's the other thing now let's take a look at uh let's see minis oh, can't use that keyboard carry screen and we're going to type in Google type in minis forum um 790 pro drivers 
We're going to look at support for Mini's Forum right here. Venus Series. UM790 Pro right here. Downloads. Okay. So that's our operating system, as we previously mentioned, the RAID driver. Where's the RAID tool? Let's just verify that it wasn't in the um, RAID folder. No executables there. No executables there, that's just drivers. That's just drivers. And that's just drivers. So we don't have an executable. And I don't see it available to download here. Check driver section one more time. I thought I went through every one of these. I'm pretty sure I did. See, it gave us the Realtek Ethernet driver, but they're missing the... Well, this is supposed to be the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth driver. Huh. Download it again. Take it out. Probably going to interrupt my update, but that's okay. Finish. No. I get rid of these little graphics down here. With Windows 11, you got to type in uh, search permissions and history right there. Scroll down to turn off search highlights, and then that gets rid of stuff down. Let's update. Wait for this install to finish and we'll do our reboot and then I'm going to reinstall that Wi-Fi Bluetooth driver because remember it asked me if I wanted to download the utility but I wasn't plugged into the internet at the time. I'm not quite sure how to get that option back other than to reinstall the driver and then um, we've got to load the driver software, the RAID configuration software from the folks who make the RAID controller whose name is eluding me at the moment. Oystein says, according to the Minis Forum Amazon page, the UM790 Pro is coming to Amazon in late June. And it did say it was shipping early July, so that fits within the timeline. John Paul Bacon wants to know, would creating an ISO of the RAID boot drive be possible? Yeah, I mean, I'm not quite sure what you'd do with it, but you have to understand that in order to recover the RAID, you have to be able to see the RAID. So if you have an ISO image or any type of a full image backup of the machine, and you need to restore that image, whatever you're booting from to load the restore software needs to be able to see the RAID array. So the driver has to be put into the boot media not worried about what's on the image. I'm worried about the boot media being able to see the RAID array, which is a whole different, that's why I say this complicates things and it can make something very simple become very complicated and certainly not for everybody. All right, now we can restart this.
Other questions? Well, um, having much better luck with this than the G GTR7, however, still has the same problem. And it may be a bit unfair because I've had the previous experience, I know what to do now. That might be fair to re-evaluate the GTR7. My preference, however, is to wait until the driver update comes out that can address whatever this is, right? Whatever this green screen is that's happening. And so what I've been doing to eliminate that is I right click on my OBS properties for this input, select the camera, then go back and select the input again. Huh, still not working good. <laughs> well, it worked for a while. I was lucky, I was getting lucky. Again, there it is. Okay, now I got some text. All right, so now there should be an installation package for the RAID software. Individual little files, like I'm showing you, those are driver-related files. That's not software, that's drivers. Please know there is a big difference between what a driver is and what software is. Now, I want to look for, uh, let's go back to screen so I can see again, and... We will load the drivers for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth one more time here. Under Downloads, under this subfolder, Killer Performance, which we just uninstalled, and now we're going to reinstall it. Next, accept the license terms. Next, complete, install. There we go. Oystein says, if you talk to B-Link about your experience. Ah, B-Link and I have gone back and forth over this issue. They've been excellent to work with, very responsive. I've got no complaints with B-Link, but it's out of their hands. It's in AMD's hands. So, you know, how much a uh, pull B-Link may have at AMD is probably no more than I do. But if enough people complain to AMD, they will address it. Now we get to restart one more time. John Williams says, I don't have any questions, but I want to thank you for the live stream and give the camera girl a thank you and have a good night. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for hanging out with us, John. Didn't offer me the option to download the utility like it did last time. Let me go back to change my source, change my source back. Okay, full screen, click on the device manager. And uh, on this storage controller, who makes it? I've already forgotten. Downloads under what I want is raid expert two. Where do I download raid expert two?
get it from the Microsoft Store? I'd rather not. So is this, do I have to? There's got to be another way. That says it's in the chipset. RAID installer, RAID driver. AMD RAID installer. Is that what I want? Maybe. Maybe. Find out. Looks like we got just shy of 300 people watching live. Hope you're all having a great Tuesday today. I am. This is just going swimmingly. Open the file. Yes. There we go. That should be our RAID software there. Much, much bigger than a driver. <laughs> All right. Perfect. That's what we want. So a lot of times, uh, RAID controllers on motherboards are made by third parties, but it appears AMD makes this one. I was thinking it was made by um, RAID Expert. I didn't realize that was a brand name for AMD. Okay, let's restart. And hopefully we didn't just break our RAID array by replacing the drivers with newer drivers, but it should be just fine. Should be. We're about to find out. Now I feel like 16 gigs of RAM is really not adequate. I think I, I, I do have 32 gigs of slower RAM, but I think I'm going to match the speed or faster for a 64 gigabit gigabyte kit from either team or silicon power, I think. And then this is going to be a monster, an absolute killer. All right, let me switch my input again. We'll go back to camera with three camera cam link input. Yay, there it is. All right, and I gotta go full screen. All right, that's what we wanna see. Now, you should be able to load up the RAID Expert software. Run application in administrator mode. And this just gives us details of our RAID array what it's comprised of. And there may be some options for caching and performance. Let's see. You can modify the cache settings. We've got read and write back cache together, which is ideal, but we want to change that. Change the name. Disk properties. Yeah, um, not a whole lot we can do in here. This is really for ongoing maintenance or if you're having any problems, it's nice to keep an eye on your RAID array. But because it's a RAID zero striped array, basically, and I can't stress this enough, you want to have a rescue disk created that has the RAID drivers. It's easiest to make it when the system's working. 
And the other thing you can do, as I mentioned, is make a system image. And whatever software you need to load from, typically off USB, whatever you're booting from, make sure that that loads the RAID drivers or you won't have any way to recover your system image. And let's see, Crystal Dismark. Let's try one more time with everything. Oh, wait, I haven't. Do a couple other things here. Let me get my utilities flash drive out. And let's install VLC. Okay. It's installing. We'll bring over. There he's an optimizer. Pop that over there. Run Prime 95 just to torture test this thing, although it's not really designed for that. We'll test out their cooling system. So let's see, we'll bring across CPU Z. Hardware monitor. No, hardware info. Bear in mind, any sort of disk utilities and whatnot will work as long as the RAID driver is loaded. But things like Crystal Disk Info isn't going to be able to identify our drives because they're now a hybrid of two drives working together. So when you try something like Drive Utilities, you're going to find that the RAID array uh, makes it impossible. Like for the Samsung Magician, it's not going to see any Samsung drives. It just sees the RAID controller. It doesn't know what to do with it. So there's some downsides to running RAID 0 that you should be aware of. And, and that's why it really should be for a data drive. But we don't really have that option here because we only have the two M.2 slots. Um, what else was I going to come? Oh, um, M95. But yeah, if we run Crystal Disk Info, it's just going to be confused. Watch this. We've essentially created our own hard drive. So all it sees is the flash drive. It does not even see our C drive at all. So be aware, any sort of drive specific utilities will not function while you're in RAID mode. So that is sort of a, a consequence that you're paying for in exchange for the performance. We cannot upgrade a drive firmware in RAID mode. It's not possible. So just all of that stuff, it's all consequences. Any drive utilities that are made by the manufacturer, like Samsung Magician or Western Digital's got their drive, they will not see their drives. All they see is this weird thing you've just created, this Frankenstein of bonding two drives together. And the software isn't designed to talk to the drives in that way. You basically got the computer tricked into thinking you've got one big fast hard drive when we really have two less fast, half-size drives. Um, and that's true of all RAIDs. It's always been true all the way back when we had mechanical spinners, same exact circumstance. It confuses newbies who don't understand why they can't see their stuff or why their utilities don't work. So there's no support for 2.5-inch SATA in this unit. No, there does not appear to be um, we went through in here looking you know, at, at the included accessories and there's no SATA cable. Now, me personally, I say good riddance on a mini PC. When you don't have the two and a half inch drive, you can make the mini PC less tall. You can make it slimmer. And I'd much prefer that, me personally. So the taller you get the unit, the more you can fit it to an half inch drive. But a lot of units, like I'm starting to see the units where they're repurposing the enclosures that have room for two and a half inch drive, but they don't give you any connectors to hook up the two and a half inch drive. So two and a half inch drives are kind of going by the wayside. If you need more storage in this, I suggest use a NAS, you know, go over your network or get a USB drive externally. It's got super fast USB 4, so your data transfer rates, you know, you're going to be at 1,000 megabytes a second. Now i got to reset this again, so yes, select a different input. 
then go back to Camlink 4K. Okay. Let's see. Full screen. What else do I want to do? Crystal Disk Mark one more time with all the software and everything loaded and the driver updated just to see if it made any difference. I don't expect it will. We'll run the full suite of tests on it one more time here. But keeping in mind, you know, the two two terabyte drives I'm using are those Fangjing drives, which are only uh, after the discount, they're about $82 a piece. So for $164, we essentially have created a four terabyte drive. Oh. I have left this. Left it in the right mode. Read and write. Let's do that again. 10,500. Fascinating. Let's see if we can do that again. Now that we've got the drivers and the software all updated, this should be the best numbers we're going to see. So. 12,723. Were we at 13,000 before? So that got a little slower for some reason. Unless it's drive heat related, but it shouldn't be. We've got the fan running underneath here. Yeah, it's definitely running. Got really nice active cooling on this for the M.2s. So this is an ideal um, configuration for this mini PC to handle exactly what we're doing. Joseph wants to know if it's still too early to decide if you prefer this over the B-Link GTR 7. Uh, there, there have always been neck and neck, right? If you looked at like the, uh, the 690 and the GTR 6, if you look at uh, these units, their specifications, they're so, so similar. I don't think you can go wrong either way. Um, that, that's a real tough question. I, I like that I can do RAID 0 in this build. I don't think I can do RAID 0 in the GTR 7. I'm going to have to look at the GTR 7 again, ultimately, before I can truly answer that. But, but today... Based on the experience I have up till now, I am really liking the minis for them better. But I might be biased. I really like the unique products coming out of minis for them. The one biggest complaint I have are the darn rubber feet being glued on. Really, really don't like that. Keep in mind, anytime we run these tests, we're not going to get the exact same numbers twice in a row, but we should still be within the same ballpark. So even though that 12,700 is a little bit lower than what we've seen, it's well within reasonable of, of the numbers we were getting. And we can run it again just to double check, see if we get a completely different number. So you see the write speed went down to 9,000 where it was at 10,000 before. That could very well be heat related. The, the idea is that under normal usage, as you're loading files and loading programs, you're going to hit the drive for a while and then utilize the program. And while you're utilizing it, you're going to have very light disk access. As a result, your drive shouldn't be getting this hot unless you're doing very long sustained reads or writes and you're doing them over and over and over again. Then you could notice a slowdown. So I suspect maybe the reason we got over 10,000 that first time was because the drive was absolutely cooled down. I don't consider this to be a heat-related problem in the sense that the amount that we're dropping is milliseconds. When I see numbers that are dropping by 80% or more, that's a problem that needs to get fixed. Heck, if it was dropping by 50% or more, I'd say that needs to be addressed. I don't know that there's anything more we can do to lower the heat on these units um, because we already have the thermal tape, they're already on a plate, and it's already got active cooling across, blowing across there. That's about as good as it's gonna get. There's no third party cooler we can add that's gonna do better than that. So, you know, at least not one that's enabling, <laughs> enabling us to close it back up. 
yeah, we get some massive cooler that sticks out of, you know, keep the thing upside down and have this thing stick out like a, like the blower on a 57 Chevy. But no, I mean, this is, this is perfect. I really like this. I don't think a Gen 5 drive would perform any better with regards to heat. In fact, I think a Gen 5 drive would perform worse because the maximum they're hitting right now is like 10,000. We're exceeding that. If we pull up HW info, does this report on the drive temperature? It may not because they're in RAID array. Let's see. So the smart reporting is also going to be kind of messed up. Because we're in the RAID controller. Looks like we're idling in the 44 degree, well, at least the graphics chip is at 45, 45 degrees Celsius. Well, this thing cranked up to 5.1 gigahertz. That is a fast CPU. Holy cow. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on these temps. We'll start up Prime 95, and let's torture this bad boy in a way that it's really not designed to be used, just to do it. We've got 16 threads. We're going to hammer all 16 threads at 100%. And we'll see if this can go 20 minutes without getting too hot. So it's already climbed to 70 degrees Celsius. Let me start my stopwatch. And we'll keep an eye on it. Jeb says, sounds like a good head-to-head -head video. B-Link versus Minis Forum. Yeah, certainly, certainly uh, content for the future once we get the driver issue sorted. Uh, yeah, that'd be a, a fair, you know, Ford versus Chevy kind of a situation there. Also considering price and uh, overall design. The, the GTR7 is a very attractive looking, different looking mini PC. The Minis Forum, sort of generic looking. And then of course, the amount of ports you have, the ability of how many monitors you can connect, whether or not you can do RAID 0, you know, side by side. Oystein says, I saw you could set up the RAID cache in the BIOS setup screen. Yeah, I just, yeah, we went through all that and I leave it at those defaults. It's where it's exactly sh should be for the best performance in general. Of course, I've got the screen so small I can't read it. Let me go back to full screen over here. Oh, it's definitely getting warm. We're already 81.5 degrees Celsius. That's toasty. 
We're only two minutes into this test. But these machines, again, they're not really designed to be used the way that we're using it right now. We're really just abusing it is what we're doing as far as Prime 95 goes. I think this would be an ideal mini PC if you're a gamer or if you're a content creator. And I think you save a lot of money getting one of these versus building one yourself. And as I mentioned, the video issue I'm having isn't likely anything you're going to have to deal with. It's just because I'm going through a capture card to capture everything. For this to be my ideal machine, it just needs more RAM. I like those Fangjing drives. I think I'm going to keep it this way. And I would use the RAM I've got, but I feel like dropping the speed is going to be... Um, when we're dealing with AMD, the RAM speed is much more critical in performance-related, you know, noticeability than it is on the Intel side of things, and especially when it deals with the graphics. So if you're gaming, you definitely want to get that faster RAM to get your best performance out of your integrated GPU on the AMD platform especially. So I think I'm going to look at uh, Amazon later today, and we'll see what they have for a 64 gig kit of DDR5, either from Team or Silicon Power, that's the same speed or higher than what we've got in here. And then that's it. There won't be any reason for me to open this up again unless I want to install a Wi-Fi 7 card when those come out. So we're sitting at 82.8 at just, oh, four minutes in. Jeff H says, Carrie, I got off work early today so I could check out the live stream. All right, well, I won't tell your boss. You're cool here. Thanks for joining us. Deadman87 said, did I change any TDP settings in the BIOS? No, I'm... So the last thing you want to do when you get a new computer is start messing about with settings that can cause the computer to crash or fail. You need to know on a new machine that the new machine works the way it's supposed to. And then if you want to go in there and you want to make some adjustments like that and you cause it to crash, you know it was your fault. I don't recommend that you get a brand new computer and immediately start manipulating anything that critical until you first established that the computer runs the way it's supposed to. And I, I don't think that can be determined quickly. I would use a machine at least a week on stock settings because I mean, unless you're a glutton for punishment and you like making your life a, uh, a living nightmare, uh, going into a new unfamiliar computer and making changes, you'll never know if it was the changes you made or the machine you got, something was misconfigured, and you'll just chase, your, chase yourself around in circles chasing your tail. But they're so fast out of the box. I know some people are just never happy. You know, this thing could be a million gigahertz Somebody be like, well, I want a million and one. It doesn't really need to have anything increased on it, in my opinion. I think just the way it's configured out of the box by the engineers is going to be the fastest, most reliable, coolest running balance of all those things together. And I wouldn't take it any further than that, me personally. And if I had a customer who did, I wouldn't support them. Even if the problem wasn't their fault, I'd say, well, Manipulated it so warranties not covered under warranty. I would, I would charge them by the hour to fix whatever damage they caused. I'll stay in business. We're at 84 degrees and a little over six minutes. Let's see, is it an 80 or a 90? It's 80. All right, we're still cool. We've reached a max of 85.5. Now, normally I would stop the test at 85, but uh, we'll let it keep running. We can go another 10 degrees. If we hit 95, I'll shut it down. You know, when you want to see the towing capacity of a Toyota Prius, I would argue that you bought the wrong car. You're abusing it and using it in a way that it wasn't intended. 
And any frustrations and damage as a result of you doing that is on you or just bringing it on yourself. So if this machine isn't enough for you, then I would recommend you spend more money and get a higher end machine rather than trying to eke out more performance. It's just silliness as far as I'm concerned. It's somebody being cheap. And it usually it results with people that just have too much time on their hands and got nothing else better to do. In my experience, that's what I encounter. As somebody running a business, I don't have time to do that. I can't. I would go out of business. And I have a lot of customers that'd be upset with me. But this is what you find on the internet. You just find a lot of people doing very impractical things. So uh, I'll let those people continue that bad behavior. I'll show you the practical answers. If you want a machine that's running and reliable, to me, that's faster than a machine that's fast but crashing, <laughs> right? It just went to sleep on us there. So that's, uh, oh, right on eight minutes. So ooh, nearing 86 degrees Celsius, not quite getting there. Winston Liu contributes $2.20 Canadian. He says, B-Link is still the best. I have B-Link. Well, you might be biased, Winston. B-Link makes great machines, though. Like I said, Minis Forum and B-Link are right up there. They're my two top two. They're neck and neck. I think Minis Forum offers a little bit more uniqueness. But I don't like that they like to cover the screws with the rubber feet, which I don't really have a problem with any other manufacturer doing that. I think it's mostly just Minis Forum that does that, but... I let them know every chance I get that they should not, you know, they should put a, a hole in these feet so they don't have to be removed so you can access the screw. But that's a very minor complaint. Jeb said, I just had a boutique PC builder inform me that the best current gen graphic cards compared to the 7950X can only support two displays at 4K. Well, unfortunately, you know, this is a field that doesn't require any licensing. So if you want to say you're a boutique system builder, if you want to say you're a technician, you just say you are one, right? And at that point, it makes it very difficult for customers, you know, if you're a legitimate tech trying to find legitimate work, for customers to be able to tell you actually have experience and know what you're talking about, because they got told something by somebody else who doesn't know what they're talking about, and they don't know which one of you is the liar, which one of you is the BSer. And so that leaves them confused, it leaves them with anxiety, and typically leaves them not making any decision and not hiring anybody to do the job because they don't know who to trust. It's a big, big problem in the industry. It's been that way since I started. And that's why word of mouth has always been my best, um, best form of advertising. That's why it's so important to me. My expectations of my customers are met. So they'll recommend me. They'll use me again. They'll refer me to their friends. That's how I stay in business. It's not about chasing another megahertz or overclocking it. That's for people who have a lot of time and they don't care about money. Um, I wouldn't care about money if I didn't have the bills to pay and if there weren't so many other people waiting for help. So for those people who want to create their own problems, they can do that without me and then they can solve their problems without me unless they want to pay me. <laughs> and I will get in and I will put it back to stock and fix it. And then if they go and undo that again, as long as they want to keep paying me, <laughs> I'll keep putting it back the way the engineers designed it. Um, you won't do that kind of work in corporate America. You'll get fired for that. But You guys have any other questions for me? We're going on a little over 11 minutes here. And uh, yeah, it looks like 85.9 is still the highest. Whatever cooling solution Minis Forum is using is impressive for a machine this small to have that much airflow to be able to keep that temperature that cool after 11 and a half minutes is impressive when you're looking at the sheer amount of megahertz we're dealing with here. That's insanity. What do you think of this little mini PC camera girl? Um, slightly impressed. 
slightly. I still, I still like the other one. Definitely. Which, the GTR7? No. The NAD9? The NAD9. Well, Minisforum makes that NAD9, but the NAD9's graphics are not going to be as powerful as the graphics on this chip. So if you were gaming, I predict that running the same games on the NAD9 on the Minis Forum uh, UM790 Pro. Well, why not? I, I, I think you will be impressed. You want me to play games on that thing? Yeah. All right. You should, you should load up a game on it. Load up your Steam. Load up a game. And I think as long as you're at 1080, you'll be fine. I'll put Requiem. I don't know what that is, but yeah, okay. Whatever Sorry, Requiem is. Okay. At 1080? Okay. Is that a game you normally play? Yes. What, what's another game you normally play? Yeah. Terra? Terra? Sure. How do you think Terra would perform on this? Uh, that's a great question. I... Maybe you should try Terra. I think she should. Pretty crap. Michelle Nava says hello from Paris, France. A bonjour. Do I know any other French? Oui, oui. <laughs> Croissant. Quoi? Croissant. 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 Une <laughs> bière No, that's German. Une bière, s'il vous plaît. You got to know how to say that in every language. Uno cerveza, por favor. Ein bia bita. Something like that. She quit while I'm ahead. 14 minutes in, and wow. Holy cow. How is that possible that we haven't exceeded 90 degrees? What sort of voodoo are minis for them doing here? I mean, we're sitting at 81.3 right now. Our max has been 85.9. That is impressive. And the machine keeps going to sleep on me, though. I need to change the power settings on this thing. I suppose I can do that while we're running. I'll just torture it some more. Let's just type in the word plan. There we go. Change this to... Save. There, now we don't have to deal with that no more. Okay, we're about 15 minutes on the test, five minutes to go, and it is passing a very unrealistic, massive torture test. I'm done with my Windows 11. These are the drivers, which I've copied off screws to go back in with the feet but i want to order some ram that's the other thing this only has 16 gigs of ram in it so it'll obviously do better at gaming with 32 but we'll do it anyway just because we can you'd rather wait all right well when we're done with the broadcast i'll look on amazon and i'll order some a, a kit of 64 gig. And I'll get fast memory. Like 6,000. Or 5,800. Whatever, 6,200? I forget the DDR5 speeds. 16 minutes in. And still... 80.0 80 degrees Celsius. So it peaked up to 85.9. Now these last five minutes, some of these tests are pretty intensive, so we'll see. Fans have been really quiet in here too. The unit is not, not very warm at all. It's basically room temperature. I don't know how they're doing this. Oh, I know another problem. One of the reasons the drives may be getting hot is I don't have the rubber feet back on the case. 
So the case is basically sitting, blocking its own fan. If yeah. I turn the case onto its side, well, now I I'm going to... I was gonna... totally going to tell you to do that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Even though I haven't put the screws back in, we'll put these little rubber feet back on here. That could make a difference in the drive performance. Yeah. If, whoops, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. So that's the plastic floor and the fan sits on it. And when I'm, when I'm holding it like that and I'm squeezing it, the plastic bends and it goes up against the fan and you hear the grinding of the fan hitting the plastic. So I need to care for that. It'll be a little bit more gentle with it. All right, we're at 17 and a half minutes. Still sitting good. Let's see here. DDR five. 64 gig, so dim. So there's 5,600. Let's see what that price is. Team is 199. 4,800 is 50 bucks cheaper. Wow, they sure do put a premium on that. Fifty two hundred is only two hundred bucks. That price is looking pretty good. I think that's what I'll get. Which more is the CL forty two. Oh, it's only 5,200, I see. 600, 10 bucks more. So you kind of get a trade-off, right? As you get the faster megahertz, your CAS latency goes up. So it may just be a wash. That's a significant price difference, though. If you dropped it to 4,800, it's only 140 bucks. So it's an extra $60. See, that's the thing. When you want to go faster, it's how, how fast you want to go, how much money do you want to spend? This is all DDR4. That's not going to be show for us here. Out of curiosity, what does silicon power have? Forty eight hundred. Pick C price. Price hidden. Uh so what I just give you my credit card and I let you charge it? Art. Let's be I'd like to know how much that is. Why is the price hidden? What is the point in that? I guess you got to add it to your cart, but I got to sign in to do that in order to see that price. But it's going to be a little slower at 5,200, which is still faster than the 4,800 that's in here. Decisions, decisions. All right, let's see how we're doing over here. Still humming along nicely. We're at 20, nearly 22 minutes. I'm going to go a full 25 minutes on this. 
just because it's doing so well, I'm going to torture it a little longer. Jeb contributes $2 in Super Chat. He says, great stuff again today. Thanks for keeping it live. Right on, Jeb. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Jason H88 says, from what I've seen on all your reviews, I think I like the minis forum the best. And let's take a look at... Um, Let's run the crystal dismark test. Let's really torture it. Do this at the same time. Make it angry. So now we're running Prime 95 and crystal dismark at the same time. That'll generate some heat. Yeah, that's what I thought. Patrick Russo wants to know, is Silicon Power a microcenter brand? No, they're a Taiwanese company. Microcenter brand is called Inland. Inland. Still three minutes in here. Let's do these two top tests. Inland Micro, something like that. Oh, it's definitely getting hot. <laughs> oh, that cut it right in half. Holy cow. All right. Uh, it's just mean. I feel like I'm being mean to this mini swarm PC. I'm starting to feel bad about it. I wonder why the machines are going to rise up eventually and take over the planet. <laughs> They're going to come after me specifically. All the mini PCs. What I, what I did to their... You. What I did to <laughs> their... Little, little <laughs> what I did to their ancestors. <laughs> okay, one more minute to go on this, and that'll be a full 25 minutes. I mean, I've seen desktops that don't perform 25 minutes at that temperature range, so congratulations to Minisform. Very well-designed box. And once we can get this whole video driver issue sorted with AMD, I think they got themselves a winner here. Thirty seconds to go. Twenty seconds. So after twenty-five minutes of running, it looks like our top temp reached is eighty-five point nine degrees Celsius, which is I'm telling you that's impressive. And anybody running a machine like this at that level. Probably shouldn't have a machine like this. You need something much better than that. All right, that's 25 minutes. I'm going to stop the test. So we'll come over here to Prime 95 and we'll click on stop. And OK. Then we'll watch these temps drop rapidly. And the fans have been really quiet. This is one of the quietest machines being torture tested. It's not screaming out in pain like they normally do. Yeah, they've done a fantastic job. Let me try this test again now. Joseph wants to know, do one or a handful of companies offer better silicon than others, or is that an enthusiast concern? I don't even think that's an enthusiast concern. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's all imagination. It's all entirely made up. That's what I think. Saying that's in reference to the RAM you were shopping. Yeah, that's just made up. People make stuff up on the internet. You know, it's really a shame because we're only scratching the surface of what's going to happen. As AI starts to implement, be implemented more and more online, being able to decipher what's real from what's fake is it's hard now. But in the enthusiast community, you've got people so obsessed with things that whether or not they matter, they're not real. That's the thing that drives me crazy is they're making up things to be upset about that are complete imagination and don't have any real world practical difference 
outside of their benchmarks. So, you know, it's, it's a strange community that obsesses, a large portion of it obsesses over things that just don't matter and things that the majority of the population could care less about. And yet this can really upset somebody's mood. <laughs> but the, the bottom line is, you know, if people choose to behave that way, that's their choice. And you have a choice as well if to whether or not you want to listen to what they have to say. So you need to identify the source of your information before you're able to determine if it's real or false. Because if the source of the information is somebody that's not known to you, if it's random on the internet, it doesn't matter how many people are saying it. It doesn't make it true because a bunch of people are saying it. Always consider your source. And at the end of the day, what matters to you is what matters to you. It shouldn't matter to you if it matters to other people that unless you're looking for that tribal sort of the more people agree, the more right it is. It's a bizarre way to be civilized, but a lot of people do exhibit that psychological behavior. And I've witnessed it a lot in my career where you've got your yes men and you've got people that go along with it and people that just adopt other people's concerns because they don't have any of their own and it makes them feel like they're part of something. So you need to be aware of that if you want to educate yourself online to identify where's the source of this information coming from? Is this a reliable, trusted source? Or is this some rando with a weird name on Reddit? And, you know, treat it accordingly. All right, so our speed dropped really bad here, but let's try it one more time. We're back down into the, uh, well, we were in the 40s a second ago. Gotten worse. <laughs> There, yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, I don't think there's much more I can do to get those drives any cooler. I could put other brands of drives that might run cooler in there. Uh, I could try brands that have their own heat sinks on them. But honestly, for everyday usage and loading your files, loading applications, or for me, rendering videos out, I'm not going to be slamming onto it like that. When I render videos, it's not... It's not rendering out at 12,000 megabytes per second. It can't process it that fast. So even at, uh, we see 88, 83 on those writes, 89, 17, we know that the write speed is capable of doing essentially 12 or 13,000 on the reads. But after we do the reads, the drive is heating up. So then when it starts to do those sequential writes, uh, it's affecting the numbers we're seeing. Now, in reality, that makes a difference of milliseconds in real life. So unless you're copying, you know, an hour's worth of data, right, something that's going to take an hour and you're just doing a constant hammering on that, I, I, would, I would hope that that wasn't something you did every day. And if it was, that you'd be using a more appropriate storage drive for that sort of thing. But, you know, I see a lot of people, they buy screwdrivers and they use them like hammers and then they complain when they break the screwdriver. I don't know what to tell people. Like, what did you expect was going to happen? Now, with this test completed, if I go back to my just the right speed all by itself. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's do that one. Let's see if the right speed's any better. So with the rubber feet on it, so it can breathe. Oh, I put that rubber foot on backwards, Carrie. It is definitely getting air under it now. I'm going to turn it sideways just to make sure. And in fact, I can even blow some air in it to see if it. Well, that's made it worse. Look at that. Apparently not an effective way to cool off your SSD. 
it's gone up since I stopped. <laughs> And that's that's crazy fast, guys. You know, when we were dealing with mechanical drives just a handful of years ago, we were lucky to see 180 megabytes a second, and now we're we're almost 10 times that nearly. We're getting there. So, and again, on the form factor, it's so tiny, five gigahertz with the RAID zero and four terabytes of ultra fast, 13,000 megabytes per second. It's it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So. Yeah, let me go back here to my profile. Talk about. Let's change this back to the normal. Let's see what uh, peak performance mix is. All right, any final questions? And I'll do my best to provide answers. I always try to keep it practical and pragmatic. Did I still just leave this on the writing? Hold on a minute. Let's double check my settings here. Profile. Read in white texture. Let's do it again. Barry says that RAM is $155. And what speed was that RAM? Was it 5,200? That's significantly cheaper than 199. Although, I'll be honest, if you're going to go with a machine this big, you shouldn't cheap out on your storage or your RAM. It doesn't make any sense. It'd be like buying a Ferrari and then buying the cheapest tires you could get for it. What I should be buying for this, if I want it to be, you know, everything it can be, is fast storage, fast memory, as much storage as I can afford, as much memory as it'll take. So 64 gigs of that 5600 is really what should go in here. Look at this number. Come here, look. Wow. Forgot which setting that one is. Is that the 4K? Random 4. Random 4 kilobit. IOPS. 131,820. They're going to have to make just this mark add another couple numbers the way this technology is advancing. So yeah, I think this machine is deserving of the best we can put in there. So because it's already got heat sinks for the RAM, I don't want to buy RAM that has heat sinks on it. And I don't want to use NVMe drives that have heat sinks on them. We want to use what's provided to us by the manufacturer. And I don't think I'm going to see better performance from a different manufacturer's drive, like Western Digital SN850. It's likely going to read and write the same speeds because they're essentially using the same NAND chips and controller that Beijing is using. So why not buy the cheaper one if we're not sacrificing anything in the line of performance? But when it comes to the RAM, if we're buying the cheaper RAM, but it's also you know, not performing as good as the more expensive RAM, then it makes sense, you get what you pay for, to buy the more expensive RAM. So this has every opportunity to be all it can be instead of holding it back with, you know, like they're holding it back with these Kingston drives. Sure, these are inexpensive and they've given you two 256s, which I would have rather seen one 512 personally, but I would have ordered it bare bones. That's what I would have done. And I would put my own storage and I'd put my own RAM in it and I go get my Windows 11 key from VIP CDK deals. We get a discount using the code Nick coupon code carry. The keys are guaranteed to work. They are 100% legitimate, legal. It's all on the up and up. And, uh, and then just go to the Minis Forum site to download those drivers, just like I showed you here. And you're good to go. You're going to save a ton of money. And that's our final numbers there with Crystal Disk Mart. Well, I guess it's still doing, doing a couple tests there. It says it's on four of five at the top of the page. Yeah, now it's done. I mean, it's a mini PC for crying out loud. Why don't you run this on your desktop computer, whatever you're using to watch this channel? If you have anything critical to say about it, what does yours run at?
That's what I'd like to know because I don't have a machine that runs that fast. Maybe the RAID controller card, but then we need a fast, you know, full-size computer to use it. Um, I think I can remove flash drive. Yeah, and I think I'm going to have to get on Amazon, order me some RAM for this bad boy, and then I can put the screws back in. And I should have no reason to ever open it up ever again. You've got a computer that's going to easily last you 10 years. Easy. This is overkill for today's needs. This is really prepping you for tomorrow, as well as being a powerful machine for gaming and for content creation. So um, it's a lot of computer for the money. Again, shop around, see what else you can get for that kind of money on traditional pre-builds. And I think you're going to find... This is better in so many ways, more portable, utilizes less power, it's quieter. Um, it's not as upgradable, but on the other hand, with everything in there like it is now, there shouldn't really be anything left to upgrade unless you want to put an external GPU on it. And you can easily spend twelve to $1,500 just on an external GPU. So, you know, gaming is an expensive luxury. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for me for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I want to thank my contributors and my moderators, uh, the moderators, everybody in blue, for keeping, helping keep it civil in the chat room today, and uh, everybody who has contributed. So Mark Gaines, Jeb, Winston Liu, Rick Lakes, Paul O'Brien, thanks, you guys, for contributing to the stream and uh, to the channel so that we can continue to make this content and keep more content coming. A shout out and a thank you to our good friend, Peter Laycock, who I'm sure will be watching this later. I want to shout out, thank you to Phil over at Minisforum for providing the sample. And uh, be sure and check out the Minisforum website if you want more information on pre-ordering this unit. It will be available at uh, supposedly at the beginning of July. If you want to be in line to get one, be one of the first to have one. They're a heck of a deal. They've got a discount on them of a pre-sale price and uh if you have questions if i've left anything out you can certainly uh leave a question in the comments and i can do my best to provide an answer or uh if i don't know the answer i can ask the folks at minis forum depending on you know if it's an answerable question some people ask questions why is the sky blue you know <laughs> But if I can't answer it, if I can, I, I'm more than happy to. All right. Um, get back here. There I am. Do I use an early version of Prime 95? Yeah, if you search my channel about uh, search Kerry Holzman Prime 95, there's a whole video on the subject and why I use the version. All right. Well, that'll wrap it up for me for today. Thank you for the camera work, camera girl, and today's thumbnail, too. And I need to find an outro. Which one shall I? Okay, I think we're ready to say goodbye. Thanks for hanging out with us. I'll see you all tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Thursday at 1 o'clock, and Friday at 1 o'clock. We've got videos set up all this week starting at 1 p.m. Pacific time, so you don't need, you don't need uh, to worry about notifications. 1 p.m. Pacific time every day this week with more mini PCs from manufacturers we've never seen before. Some are budget and some are expensive. So to cover, you know, try not to alienate anybody. We've got some under $200 and some as much as $500. All coming up on the channel this week and a lot more next week. Thank you for being a part of this amazing community. If you like this video, be sure and give it a uh, thumbs up. There it is. Give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content like this. Be sure and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when I go live. 
in general, if I'm going to go live, if it's going to happen 90% of the time, it's at one o'clock Pacific time. So if you're just curious, anytime after one o'clock, check my channel to see if I'm live. You don't have to rely on those notifications. I know a lot of people have issues with them. People who get them who don't want them and people who want them who don't get them. What are you going to do? All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all very, very soon. Just lost my outro. Until next time. Bye for now.